Okay, in this chapter we're going to cover burns. This is going to be chapter 11 if you're following along in your book. And burns, this is an extensive chapter. I could really do a long video series or several video series about this. Um, but I'm going to simplify this just so I can highlight some of the major areas. So if you're following along in your book, there's a lot more information in your book. About 80%, and I'm trying to keep these videos down to 15 minutes, so that's the reason I'm just going to hit the, highlight the major points. 80% of burns occur at home. So that's an interesting fact. Um, so uh, most likely if you're caring for a burn, you're going to be caring for somebody that you know. So um, the highest risk, so your highest risk are children under five. So that's also important to know if you if you have children it's important that you understand how to care for burns and the the different types of burns and severity of burns. So let's talk about the types of burns. So we have the types of burns and we have thermal probably what we think of when we think of a burn. We have chemical, we have electrical. I believe that's all the types that your book talks about. There's also radiation. And I know your your book talks about sunburns and that's what that would be. So a certain burn would be considered like a radiation burn. Um, but I don't think that your book classifies it that way. So um, thermal burns, when you're thinking about thermal burn, think about a flame. So if you actually burned yourself on a flame or a hot object, that would be a thermal burn. There we go. It's kind of hard to write with this pen. There we go. So it's probably one of your most common types of burns is a thermal burn. And chemical burns, so anything like, let's say you were burned by an acid, that would be a chemical burn. And so you also have electrical. With electrical, you got to be careful because somebody might experience a V-fib or it might put somebody into an altered rhythm. A lot of times it will cause them to freeze when they're getting electrocuted, and so they can't get away from the source that's that's electrocuting them and the entry site is often small so you may not think much of it and sometimes the exit site though is can be huge especially where when the electricity is trying to get to the ground it might do quite a bit of damage especially in a lightning strike where it can uh, blow parts of the body off in extreme cases so those are the different types of burns let's uh let's also go into the depth of burns. So if you want to classify them by depth, you have first degree. So we have a first degree burn. We have second degree. And you have third degree. So with first degree burns, these are super superficial. So right on the top layer of the skin, so just on the outer layer there, on the very top layer. These are a little bit easier to care for. And with the second degree, the outer and inner layer are burned to some extent. So you may have a little bit of capillary damage. So some damage to the capillaries. Um, may even have some blisters form. Those blisters are protective, so don't break those open, so don't pop a blister. And then we have third degree burns, and these are considered severe, and you're going to make, make sure that you get medical treatment if you experience a third degree burn. It penetrates um, all layers of skin, so it penetrates all layers. And these can be deceptive. I've actually experienced these when I used to work as a police officer. A lot of times I was a first responder on the scene and I had an individual 
that was burned so severely his skin was falling off. And uh, I know this is kind of graphic, but this will bring home the point. And he didn't have any pain. Didn't really know he was burned that bad. He had pain at the sites that were first and second degree, but no pain on the sites that were third degree, which was majority of his body. And so um, his clothing had been completely burned off and he didn't experience any pain because he had so much nerve damage and so he was in shock essentially or going into shock when I arrived and thought he was okay and wanted to go back and and get some stuff from his house which there wasn't much left but uh, anyway really severe burn and a lot of times individuals won't know how badly they are burned um, they may feel, feel some pain on the parts that are superficial or first degree or second degree they may not feel any pain on third degree because the nerves have been burned. So care for these. Um, simply cold water. Some aloe would be good for first degree. Um, cold water. So kind of flush with cold water. Oops, that should be an E. Cold water and some ointment. So antibiotic ointment would be good there. And then um, on a third degree, you want to cover it. And this is what I was talking about on loose dressings. That's to keep it from, from dirt to get in there. Probably going to have to treat the person for shock, even if they haven't lost a lot of fluids and stuff. Um, they may still experience shock uh, just because of uh, the sheer uh, shock of it to the, through the nervous system. and. Um, so we've got, you want to monitor their breathing. A lot of times with burns, especially when we're talking about um, thermal burns, you, you're going to have to deal with smoke inhalation and stuff like that too, but the breathing can also be altered, not just because of smoke inhalation. And you want to definitely seek medical attention as soon as possible. So we're covering it just so that it doesn't get dirty and doesn't get infected so that should uh, break those down for you and let's talk a little bit about the different layers so you've got a layer of skin you've got the outer layer which you know you've got your hairs here and the pores and all that good stuff so if it was first degree it would be just superficial to just that first layer and you've got some fat in here um, between the layers so I'm just drawing a little um, adipose cells here of course it would be a lot more so with first first degree we're just burning this outer layer here um, with a second degree I'm going to draw some muscles down here so this is some striations from the skeletal muscle so second degree we might get the inner and outer layer but we're not quite to the muscle and so we got some nerves running through here I'll just draw some nerves here let me draw a little nerve here. It's my artwork for the day. So we got some nerves running through there. And so if you had a third, so here's first degree, just the outer layer, and here's second degree, inner and outer layer, and then a third degree would encompass all of this, maybe even as deep to the bone, just depends. And so you're going to have a lot of charring uh, occur, but what happens here is it goes so deep that it gets to the muscle goes through the inner outer layer into the muscle and destroys the nerves, destroys a lot of capillaries that are innervating the tissue and does a lot of damage. And you can have a lot of fluid loss if quite a bit or a large percentage of the body is burned. Your book talks about the different percentages, like if it's first degree and it's under 50% and you know talking about when to call 911, when not to seek medical help. Um, you can read through all that, but if I was to go over all that right now, that would um, take up a lot of different, um, it would take up a lot of, of time, and I want to keep these videos fairly short. The last thing I want to talk about are chemical burns. So with chemical burns, you want to wash for about 20 minutes the, the skin to make sure you get it all off, especially like hydrochloric acid, or well, um, any type of acid so you want to wash that off and, and get as much off as possible you also want to remove clothing 
because that chemical could still be on their clothing and continue to burn the person's skin and you want to seek medical medical care so that's chemical burn and that's the reason like if you're in a chemistry class you'll see the little showers in those science labs so that people can, can quickly wash off um, the chemical so those are the types of burns and the depth of burns there's a lot more information in your book if you want to go over it but I wanted to keep it real basic so there wasn't didn't take up too much time so I hope this was useful for summing up some of the major areas of the chapter if you need more detail go into the book or the PowerPoints and I'll see you in the next video